with the yo-ho-ho, -ho, it's Tale of the Toaster. Welcome back to Let's Play Super Smash Bros. Brawl Adventure Mode, the subspace emissary, very hard. In the last video, we went to the forest, but in this episode, we have the research facility to do, and that's why the game's rated T for Teen. Hi, Zero Suit Samus. So yeah, I would have done this at the end of the last episode, but it is a pretty long level, if I remember correctly. So I saved it for this part. We'll just see how quickly I get it done. And now, I have been blabbering about this quite a lot recently. Hey! Bloody Rob, get out of here. Also, new enemy, Rob, yay! But yes, I have been blabbering about this quite a lot recently. And I'm pretty sure everybody knows by this point. But I am obliged to ask, do I sound any different? Why that would be because I've got myself a fancy new mic, that being the blue snowball. I went shopping in... I can't flip jump up there apparently. Yes, I went shopping in Hull recently and I said to myself, no, maybe I should go in some music stores, they might have a blue snowball or something. I'll try to go into an upbeat just to view that. Maybe they'll have a blue snowball or something. Tell you what, if you see one for under £50, consider it. So... I'm walking about in Hull, and I arrive at cash converters, and what do they have in a window other than a blue snowball for $49.99? And that's the 2012 blue snowball too, not the 2009 one, so that's got an RRP of £100, and it's on Amazon for about 72 and I've picked it up for $49.99 and it worked perfectly, so I'm really pleased with that purchase and I'm sure I sound better for it. I was really desperate for a new, but for an external mic because in the past few episodes not only have I been a little bit quiet, but most importantly my computer, with my mic is inside my laptop, it's been picking up on my computer's loud fanning noises which it started making recently. The Elgato's a bit tough for it to handle. Also had a few visual glitches and I might have put that down to using the Elgato's own commentary record so I'm back to audacity guys. Anyways, maybe I should be talking about what's happening. Got a few more things to say about our recording setup but for now Pikachu is going through all sorts of torture and pain but Zero Suit Samus uses a really weak attack to break open the super thick glass the Robs have identifying skills, and I could show off the new character, but I'm sure I'm going to get KO'd at some point anyway. So let's use Zero Suit Samus. So, for a few other changes I've made to recording setup, well, apart from using the blue snowball, uh, not much has changed except for the fact that in recent times my compute, well, my GameCube controller. Uh, you don't go through that door yet. I don't know why I came over here, to be honest. But yeah, I was picking up on my controller noises quite strongly, and for optimal usage of the blue snowball, I need it basically underneath me, because if I had it on a tripod near the Wii, it would pick up not the laptop's loud fanning noises, but the Wii's loud fanning noises, which it now makes, which is another big inconvenience. So I have to have the microphone underneath me, so that was picking up controller noises stronger than ever. So I put some blue tack around the control stick and the C stick. So hopefully it doesn't get stuck while I'm playing. It does cushion the noises quite nicely. It makes it a little harder to use. But hey, we're doing a very hard playthrough, right? Might as well make it a little bit harder for myself. So indeed, I got KO'd with Zero Suit Samus, so now I can show off the new character. Pika Pika Pikachu, and these are the enemy Rotor. We've encountered it before, I, I believe. Yeah, in, in Sky World or Sea of Clouds, something like that. So, no need to, in fact, yeah, I've done all the explaining about that, but here's a mechanic which first debuted in the Battlefield Fortress and I failed to explain. Locked gates! How do you open them? How do you think you need a key? And what is that? A really shiny key! Well, let's... Oh, my control stick's stuck. Oh, it's still stuck. Maybe, maybe this blue tack thing isn't going to work out after all. Oh, finally dislodged it. Gee. Oh, we can't jump up there. What are all these enemies? Please go away. Uh, 
So there's another locked gate. What do you think we're going to do to that, eh? First we're going to take out this row turret, and then we're going to make use of that key. Whoever saw that coming, but before picking up the key, let's eat this Maxim tomato and get this collectible over here, a trophy of Luigi's Mansion. How appropriate for this time of the year, when everyone's still raving about Dark Moon. And if I was American, I'd probably be raving about Pokemon Mystery Dungeon instead, but us Europeans have to settle for a marketing ploy and wait until May 17th and blah, and I'm kind of talking about current events. It's Mario Tennis Power Tour all over again. They're you know, talking about my brand new mic and the recent release of games. Maybe you should stop talking about current events and follow the red arrows, get back on track and get rid of these bloody robs all in the way. Oh, I hope you guys don't consider bloody swearing. Some people do and some people don't. It's generally censored to be safe. But while I do keep my videos free of swearing, you've got to go through this door second. This level confuses people because there's three doors and you've got to go through them in the set order. Anyways, bloody's generally censored for safety's sake, but I'm British. How could I not say bloody in my LPs? It's just one of our stereotypes. Tally ho, you want a cup of tea, my darling? So, there's these electric jikes which make the effects of water, even though there are hydro jikes. And this is a really, really easy ambush. Just use thunder to beat the glunders. Oh, I've messed it up. I've messed it up completely. Be one of the easiest ambushes in the game. Oh, that really is it. See why it's so easy? But yeah, the way to that switch is pretty easy. The way back. Not so, and yeah, I'm probably going to have to get rid of this blue tack around the controller. Because while it's cushioning the noise very nicely, uh, my control stick gets stuck. But it was a thought, and I'm not going to remove the blue tack until the end of this video. So, let's see if it hinders me at any point, eh? So, Rob! Out of the way! Oh, blocks! And I was just about to get up there. There, we're up now. So... More robs to ignore and avoid, and go through this door into a void. Yeah, behind that door there is some kind of weird void. Yeah, you can come to here earlier, but you'll get to a certain point and then you can progress no further. Ignore these rob launchers, which is a new enemy. There's the door here which you can go through. Also, look at the water ball, it looks so nice. But yeah, once you go through this door, if you've done these doors in the correct order, well, first there's a collectible up here I must collect, which is a Maxim Tomato. How can I not say it like that? Yeah, there's these things made out of metal. Obviously, when we hit the switch through the second door of the main hub area thing, the fifth door of the whole area, was it? Doesn't matter. Oh, punch! Did you not die in this area? I think that's the case. Still try and take a little less damage. I should explain Metal Primage, but I'll just keep talking about this for now. But yeah, once you've hit that switch, all these things will drop down. If you don't hit that switch, when you come here, it'll just be an empty world of why? Why are you using. Oh, Thunder actually worked. Metal Primids reflect projectiles when you hit them, so they basically have the effect of the Franklin badge item. But I was able to hit that Metal Primid with a thunder and I got away just fine. Hey look on the screen, I saw the power suit which Zero Suit Samus wants, despite Zero Suit Samus being a much better character than Samus. And the fanboys prefer her. Pikachu sure is big in this game. Pikachu's not that big in the Pokemon games, but look at Samus's power suit. But is it in possession of Samus? Well, maybe we'll retrieve that another time, but with only 9 minutes and 20 seconds passed, the lake shore is not that long of a level. We 100%ed that last level, so let's go to the lake shore. So Kirby just randomly runs away from Zelda or Peach if you decided to save her, and Bowser's just stood still. Zelda makes no effort. To prevent herself getting shot in the chest and look another Bowser which then turns into Happy Beads, submerges Zelda and Kirby never stops to think hey I might have ditched the princess. So out of the two princesses I do prefer Zelda to Peach but that's not the main reason I saved Zelda. 
You're about to see why shortly. Her dark cannon gets blown up by Pit. And so now Zelda is about to commence in a battle with either Pit or Mario. See, if you saved Peach, you'd instead be commencing in a... Well, you would be playing as Link or Yoshi. And Mario is one of my favourite characters to play as in Smash Brothers. So naturally, I would like to be Mario for this part. I think that if Mario dies, you'll get to use Pit. Yeah, you've only got two lives, which is still pretty broken. Would be better if it was just one-on-one, -on -one, but that's less lives than you usually get for one-on-one. -on -one. So this part of this stage is grounded, and this part over here allows you to meet your snack. Now that in the Brawl Mod Project M, it's either this area or the, the place where you first fight Dark Bowser, which they made into a real stage, which I find very interesting. I'd play there if I had the mod, but they didn't make a PAL version, so I was about to say you're missing out on business, but it's free, so there's no real business to be happening. And again, Mario and Pit, here with Zelda and the Happy Beads, if you save Peach, then there'd be a role reversal, it'd be Mario going in for a giant punch here. Instead, Link goes for the far cooler looking thrust. So again, I can choose between Pit and Mario, I'm obviously going to go for Mario. You know, I should repeat a cutscene just to show it off at some point. I might make the time take the time to do that at some point. But yes, Mario and Pip battle Yoshi and Link all the other way around if you chose to do it like that. But I didn't. So, after the long loading screen ends, Pip's gonna spam Angel Ring and then we're gonna battle Link and Yoshi. So, the Lakeshore... The second half of the Lakeshore is not that fun, but I do, in general, quite like the Lakeshore because of this battle segment that lets me use Mario. With Pit on my team, you know, I could just roll CPUs if I wanted, but you get a unique stage for a fight on, and I get to use one of my favourite characters, so I do like the Lakeshore for that, and a bumper! This could end the match right now! Well, it got rid of Link. Well, it doesn't look like we're going to get any capes on Meteor Smashes. We're just going to rely on items. They're not cheap at all. So Yoshi is punishing me near the edge. Oh, wrong way! Okay, the bumper's going away now, so... Well, Pit has taken significantly less damage than me. I know I'm going on the initiative more, but you'd think I'd be doing a little bit better. I don't know what level your teammate is for this. It might depend on difficulty level. Yoshi is doing a really good job of resisting. I know he's a heavyweight, one of the lighter heavyweights, but I didn't think he would have gone by now. Let's hit him with the power of flowers or not. Well, let's... No, he's way too high for me to use Cape. Control stick got stuck again. You know, I'm starting to get used to it. Cape, that sets him off. And then at 172%, we're finally able to put Yoshi out of the game. We turn him into trophies. But they're protagonists, we can't just leave them like that. Also, look, Peach! On a cargo with D D and Ness and Luigi! I like how there is Luigi on that cart. Or Luigi. Mario doesn't even care that his brother's there. But, oh, have I been completely mistaken? Is there Luigi on? Yeah, there is Luigi! I'm sure there's Ouija on there, but Mario doesn't give a damn. He only cares about his girlfriend, who probably isn't his girlfriend. I don't know. Me being the speculator, I think Mario's still with Pauline. But let's go with Yoshi, because this is quite a good level for egg rolling. We'll go with Pit, Link, and Mario. So Kirby's going to get missed out. I'll try and alternate between the five, because we will be using this... Uh, group of five again, so Yoshi's very good for this because he can just command through all the enemies with egg roll, a collectible, you might as well take the time to get it, it's a Nintendo scope, or as you Americans get to call it, the super, the super scope, I had to hiccup, time's a ticking for its life, I made that pun again, so yeah this platform has wind, you can see I'm naturally going backwards, well, not very far then because the platform is coming to a standstill. These bomb beds will actually kill themselves at will after they've thrown their heads. But you might as well give them a hit. See, they'll just walk straight off. Now we've got some more challenging enemies. We've got the spark and also the grief. 
That gets rid of the creep. There's a mushroom there. And yes, it is a super mushroom, so that gets rid of this part. So now we can shove the wind. Oh, I just took some damage instead. Yeah, I'm not holding the control stick back here. There's just wind which is pushing Yoshi backwards. Bullet bills, they ain't no problem. I can just crouch and avoid them completely. Well, those bullet bills will require some attacks. And then that platform gets so thin. Okay, there's no collectibles over here. Good to know. There's going to be a cliff, edge, chasm, crevasse, precipice, cliffside. I don't know, something coming up. And auto-scrolling, hooray! I'm going to try and get a maximum tomato off of this. So I've got hit twice, now I've detached myself, then I defeat the Buculus for a Max and Tomato, gaining a profit of some amount of damage. There's the Hydro Jike, which uses Electric Jike sound effects. Hydro Jikes are the only thing in the game besides Squirtle which use the water effect. So that's quite interesting to know. The water effect is very under... Well, Mario's Flood does do... Uh, it does use the water effect, but I was didn't think about it because uh, am I on the slide launcher? Yes. See, the character Pokemon Trainer obviously has the characters Squirtle, Ivysaur, and Charizard, and Charizard will take 10% more knockback from water type attacks and 10% less knockback from grass type attacks. As an example, gliding is the fastest way to move with Pit. But yeah, only Squirtle, out of all the playable characters, can actually use damaging water-type attacks. And only Ivysaur can use damaging grass-type attacks. Not even any subspace enemies can use grass-type attacks. So, grass is a very underused effect. A lot of bosses actually resist uh, the grass-type because it's... Generally considered to be the same as the slap effect. Hey, look, a sign post. Supposed to be written in earthbound text. Can't read it now. There's the Shade Ass. That's a new enemy. They can up. They don't have much defense, but you can only hit them in their flashing red cores, which often they will be hiding. So there's a bit of timing involved to get rid of them. Nom 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 nom. Hot dogs. Some of these platforms will collapse, so you want to be. Hey. Uh, you want to be quick with these. Is there any collectibles there? I don't think so. If there is, then I'll regret it later. Fire is not being too much of a problem, because I am faster than it. Oh? Huh. I think I've found this door once or twice, but I do forget about this door quite a lot. So, looks like I'm... You didn't even go through the door, then. But it looks like I'm still on path. 100% seeing as I didn't forget about this, which is good. Trophy of Mew! And also a sticker for our troubles. So, those very rectangular blocks of water can leave us forever. My, comp my laptop is making lots of fanning noises right now, but I'm looking at my Audacity track, which I can also use as a timer, and you can't, it's not picking it up at all visibly. So that makes me smile. Oh, I'm so happy to have a new microphone. So there's three doors here. You want to go for the top one, but for completionist sakes, I'm obviously going to show off them all. You can throw a key at the door, or just walk into the door. You can see up there, there is no reason to be going through here, but I am going to... Don't get hit by the flames, look at all the stalactites, and now we can move into another, um, oh, not an ambush yet, but you do actually need to defeat that shade ass in order to make another door appear. So let's go through that door, shall we? Let's get really excited about going through a door! Okay, that was quite loud. Uh, wow, I'm just looking at my audacity track, that is gonna blow those ears away. Maxim Tomatoes, they are quite plentiful in this game. Oh, look at the P2 entry. It looks so sad. But I don't think I'm ever going to be able to show up the game's co-op mode. Because the only people I could ever play this game with on co-op mode, they either generally don't speak, but yeah, they just... Any friends that I play this game with in real life just don't speak. So, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to show off co-op mode. But hey, we got an ambush mode. I could always just 
plug a second controller in and say, There, I'm showing off two player mode now. Even though no one's moving the second character, I'm technically showing it off. Anyway, Shade Ass. There's lots of Shade Asses. Cup of coffee! I think it is coffee, but. Yeah, it's clearly a cup of black coffee, but it looks like tea, so it it reminds me of my country. And our many, many stereotypes. And we have lots and lots of stickers. And a Warp Star Trophy, Golden Door. And that is the end of it. We have a little cutscene here. That's King Dedede's castle. Looks a lot more glum than it does in the anime. And a shadow of the harbour. Maybe that's a bit of foreshadowing. Stage clear. Bombard, Copper and Booker. Okay, I'll stop that. And we have another cutscene. Hey, look, it's Gaining Dork, who's checking on Bowser's progress. If it wasn't obvious enough, they're on the same side. They're both the bad guys. He's got the Koopa Troop behind him, moving very slowly. And are we now we're going to get Gaining Dork's name. So we can save, and in the next episode, we'll head to the path to the ruins. Goodbye.